Now this, my friends, is a potato vodka. If you get an opportunity to get a potato vodka, get a potato vodka. Potato vodkas made with potato are my favorites. We're going to set that right there because we may need that again. That's a lot of vodka, isn't it? Well, that's because this is so strong. This is like drinking tomato paste. So we have to dilute it. But this is not ready to drink. Well, maybe. No, no, it's not ready to drink. So we're going to set it off to the side and we're going to add some things to that as we go. Because we really need to stir up that juice. We'll find something to put on those spears later. Okay. Y'all keep an eye on that for me now. Don't let nobody touch it. Okay. We are going to peel the onions down, chop them up very finely diced. We're going to add tomatoes and fresh jalapenos. Fresh jalapenos. They say they're not hot if you don't eat the seeds. Wrong. It's not the seed. It's, it's everything about them. Mm -hmm. Something else about working with jalapenos, though. You know when you get this juice and stuff on your fingers? You can't wash it off. You can turn on this faucet and use soap and water and anything all you want, but it's not going to wash it off. Heaven forbid you touch your eye or scratch your butt because you're going to be in pain where it might hurt. Also today, I am going to compare two knives. I have this Chicago cutlery knife that was actually very expensive. I don't like it so much. The knife doesn't want to go straight down. It always wants to go at an angle, and an angle, and an angle. It just annoys the hell out of me. And I know that repeating myself, an angle, an angle, an angle, just annoys the hell out of you too. Well, anyway, the other knife that I use almost exclusively is the little cheap Farberware knife. Yeah, just a plastic handle. I think it came in a set of maybe two or three. But I like this one a lot. The other Farberware knife that I have is the one with the blunt nose. You see the difference in the two? You see? I don't like this one. I love this one. Yep, this is the one I like. This is the one I don't. Now that we have that out of the way, let's move on. See, this... You see how it wants to like go off to the side? I cannot guide that knife in there. But now let's take this knife. That was a cop out because that was just a little shortcut. You want to know why I left the, the root balls on? Because when you cut that That's just naughty. Okay, whenever you cut the, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'm not. I'm not a bit sorry. You see these little Mexican fireflies hanging around? Do you see them? There's one right there, right there somewhere. Yeah, those are to keep the roaches away. I have roaches coming out of my asshole. And yeah, as long as you have those little Mexican fireflies flying around, the roaches go away. Same way you do. You know that's a lie, don't you? Just gotta check up on you. Something kind of stupid. We're gonna be doing two dishes. One dish by itself is pico de gallo. I don't consider pico de gallo really a salsa, or I consider it more of a garnish. It's just a whole bunch of raw vegetables all put together with the right seasonings and flavors. 
and you spoon it on to whatever you want. I particularly like it on uh, a hamburger steak. But the second dish is going to use the pico de gallo as a stuffing inside a bean casserole. It's technically going to be a stuffed bean dip. Mm -hmm. I was going to call it a baked bean dip, but I knew there was going to be all kinds of controversy with, is it a baked bean dip or is it a baked bean dip? Is it a bean dip that's baked? So I just changed the name completely. It's going to be a stuffed bean dip. We got a nice bowl of sweet onion, all chopped up, diced up, and ready to use. We're going to set that off to the side. God gum it! I forgot to put onion in the Bloody Mary mix. Mm -hmm. Since I missed the onion, we get three olives instead. See, three. That's because I already ate one. I like olives. All right, what else do we want to start with? I think this is probably going to be holding up more than any of the others, too. So we'll go ahead and do the jalapenos. Oops. Do we need to wash them? Yes. We already washed them, but we should show that we wash our fruits and our vegetables. Yeah. Just to keep the salmonella out of the salad. Isn't that a pretty pepper? Of course, I probably don't need all of these peppers in my dish. Oh, yes, I do. What am I? Who am I kidding? Yes, I do. Clean out the core, all the seeds, put them in a bowl. We're going to wash all of them in a few minutes. Now, see, this is where I am lighting my fingers on fire. This is now... The time I need milk to rinse my fingers with because I won't be able to touch any part of my body for the rest of the day or anyone else's body as far as that goes. Child, let me touch somebody now. I like them on fire. Mm -hmm. It'll be single to my old my ass. Mm -hmm. And see, worst thing, turn on the water. It just activates that juices and keeps it flowing. Mm. I can be sadistic. Sometimes. I guess the bigger knife does kind of work better with you have a, a long cut. Ah, oh, shoot. We forgot to put a jalapeno in the Bloody Mary. Mm -hmm. That's okay. It's just fine without a jalapeno in it. I gotta tell you, do not start this project or any project that involve these without having a bowl of milk around. My knuckles are all burning like fire. I don't know if I can go on. It's a lot of trouble, I know. Look at that. I can't even cut a damn tomato with that. Well, that one either, as far as that goes. All right. This one will work. Love these knives. I gotta say, the tomato is the main ingredient, too. We have a lot more tomato than we do anything else. I may have to take a little break, have myself a cocktail. Oh, speaking of cocktail.
I said set that a little bit closer. Oh, there. Got the cilantro washed. Now, the other thing I like about cilantro is I just like the leaf. Isn't that a pretty leaf? See, I'd love to just have cilantro leaves all in my salads. But people think that's a little too much to chew. So they want it chopped up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sit here and meticulously tear these pretty little leaves apart so that my salad is actually beautiful as opposed to just flavored. Mm-hmm. You think I'm going to do this for the rest of all of this shit? Nay, no way. All right. That's enough of that. I just so happen to have bottled lime juice. It's perfectly fine. You'll get over it. But I use this to make my cocktails. Lime juice, a little bit of sugar water, and your vodka or tequila, you're good to go. And you don't have to have sugar water. I put too much cilantro in that, and I'm loving every damn sprig of it. Now, the bowl I have set aside to put this in looks a little small for all those ingredients, don't you think? Nah, it'll work just fine. Let's put the cilantro on the bottom. Gosh dang it, I forgot to put cilantro in my Bloody Mary. Now that I will add. There. Dad, gum it. All right, take some tomatoes and put them in there. Oh, I'll just put all of them in there. We'll do that. I want to put some spices in there. We're going to use garlic powder. The reason we're going to use garlic powder is the uh, other garlic that I have. And I also was told to leave salt out of this, too. So, you know, what? we're going to leave salt out. So that's everything fit in the bowl. We've got to put everything in that we want to marinate with now. That's the juice of about, what you say, three limes, four limes. Wow. Can y'all see how colorful that is? Red, white, and green. Wow, that's the Mexican flag. What do you think? Doesn't it look pretty? We have garlic powder and lime juice with a bunch of cut up vegetables, jalapenos, sweet onion, and Roman tomatoes. We're going to use this as a garnish, of course, on the table to spoon onto your dish. But we're also going to use this to stuff the bean dip. All right, we are going to cover this up, just like so, and set this in the refrigerator. I guess we'll have margaritas today after all. No room in the fridge. Well, this is only segment number one coming to an end. Because segment number two is when we're going to put it all together in the baked bean dip, and that's going to be tomorrow. So... I will get you back up to date in uh, just a little bit. All right, y'all enjoy your day. I just realized that there's a cocktail party tonight. Mm -mm. Margarita party tonight. I'm still drinking Bloody Marys from this morning. We're back on another day. Yep, today is Saturday, Cinco de Mayo. And we're making a side dish to go along with the fajitas that are being served by the neighbors. And we're going to be working with refried beans. Yep, canned refried beans. That's because I don't know how to make fresh refried beans. I don't think I care to learn how to make fresh refried beans. So we have three cans of refried beans in our pot. I want to flavor them a little bit 
to give them more of a bean dip taste. It's not a refried bean side dish. It is going to be a stuffed bean dip. And I'll show you in a few minutes what we're going to stuff it with. We're going to season the beans with some garlic pepper, garlic powder with pepper, some chili powder to give it that Tex-Mex flavoring. Yesterday was the fourth. And as people were coming up, of course you feel like you have to go greet them. And I can't greet them without a cocktail in hand. So needless to say, I had a little much. And just a little bit of Lowry seasoned salt. Not too much. Remember the pickle de gallo we made yesterday? Well, this is where half of it's going to come into play. The pickle de gallo is going to be the stuffing. Yeah. So we're taking two dishes. We're going to be taking pickle de gallo as well in its normal form. Now remember what we have in the pickle de gallo, right? We have good lime juice. We have fresh tomatoes, fresh sweet onions, fresh cilantro, a little bit of garlic powder. We did not add any salt and pepper. Did I forget to mention something that we know we put in there that I just forgotten since yesterday? Trust me, I have forgotten a lot since yesterday. I forgot how to come home last night. Well, I came home last night. It just took me till 3 o'clock in the morning to get here. We're just going to put this cheese all around on that. All right. So that's what it looks like. We have shredded cheese on the top of pico de gallo on the top of spiced up refried beans. Let's see how this turns out. Now, as far as timing this, it's going to be more of sight. So we are going to have to open that oven up probably in about 20 minutes or so, maybe half an hour, just to see if those beans have boiled up around the edges and to see if they've come up around the edges enough to engulf the stuffings into the middle. Mm -hmm. It's all a crapshoot. When you have friends or family members that can, and they've given you things like jelly or jam or anything pickled in a jar, if you don't pickle yourself and if you don't need this jar, save it and give it back to the person that gave it to you. It gets expensive when you go to buy all these jars. And we are such a uh, society of use and dispose. This is not trash. This is totally recyclable and it's totally reusable. Now, something else that you can do with this, I failed to mention before, and I left it out this time. Throw yourself a little pinch of sugar in there that'll wake that flavor right up. The other thing you can do Put a couple of tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Mm -hmm. Real good apple cider vinegar. This right here is going to go in the refrigerator and serve its purpose in the future. This right here is the end result. It did not bake over and cover the top, but it's fine. It's good, good, good. That's going to be a dip. It looks like a bean casserole. Mm -hmm. 